Fisher to kick it away. And a fair catch signaled for and taken successfully. Anticipation here as the D line sandwiches together. The former Indiana Hoosier here, Tevin Coleman. And he'll get this one up to the 26. Now, for Coleman, if you combine the rushing and receiving yards, close to 1,000 last year. He had eight touchdowns as well. It was just really a great one two combo with Devontae Freeman. An outstanding one. And just think if he's on just about any other NFL team, he's probably the lead running back. Mm -hmm. And Devontae Freeman gets the bulk of the carries. But Coleman, when he does get his hands on the football, he really produces a big way, speaking of the numbers you just gave. Sanu, the man in motion left. They will run again with Coleman. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Give him 11 yards that time and a new set of downs. Whenever we meet with coaches and they always talk about wanting to establish running the football, it's oftentimes with a good tight end who can control the line of scrimmage and the point of attack, and they're becoming harder to find because the colleges are giving us a whole lot of receiving tight ends, former wide receivers who can run, not necessarily block very well. In this case, though, we saw two tight ends on the field, both of them with the ability to block, and they ran the ball successfully behind that power set. Well, coaches always talk about finding balance on offense. How we can get much more balance than this? Big time run, big time pass. A oh, one-two combination, yeah, pretty good. How about that? <clears throat> let's see if they, let's see if they can continue to take that kind of. Mo is in the losing brackets. Yes. And he's going to get this one down to the 45. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. This drive is turning to an extended one, and, and the guy carrying the ball. He's becoming more like a body blows guy. Every carry is putting some damage on the defense. So after a while, I'm not too sure how many guys going to want to run up and tackle him. Sanu, the man in motion left. They stay on the ground. Again, it's Coleman. And able to push forward for right around three yards down to the 42. Partner, we know today's NFL is really built around the guy throwing the football. But these short runs, they still pay dividends because they can take their toll on a defense and they can add up as the game goes along. You control the clock, you control the ball, and that way you often control the game. They'll bring a receiver in motion left. Here's Coleman. Oh, he's got some breathing room. And he's able to pick up the first down here before he goes down at the 26. It's so important to establish the running game early in a contest because when you do that, that just opens your playbook so big for your offensive coordinator. And to be frank about it, they like calling pass plays better than they like calling running plays. And with the way that they're running it right now, that's going to open things up to do whatever they want through the air as this game goes on. Shipped together here from the D-line. They'll run for the first time with Devontae Freeman. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. And when you watch Devontae Freeman run the football... All right, the quarter's almost, almost up, so then we'll have the spotting game the football, up. Because <laughs> people just scatter. I mean, you know, when he goes through a pile, it moves in a positive direction for him. I just love how hard he plays the game. A thousand yard season. He had 11 touchdowns last year. In March, 25 years old. So he's kind of hitting that sweet spot for a running back, isn't he? He really is. I still remember the evaluation of him coming out of college. He does everything well, but you weren't sure he had a dominant trait. Well, wrong about that. He's dominant just about everything he does. And I think that he's going to continue to elevate his game and seek a third Pro Bowl in 2017. Eighth play of this opening drive coming up. This is third down. From the gun on third down, Ryan. And he 
takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. The Pro Bowl wideout Julio Jones is intended receiver, and it brings up fourth down. They got pressure there and only rushing three. And there's a defensive coordinator right now who is celebrating not just getting home with three there, but realizing if that's the type of pressure he can get in the entire game, then his pass defense is going to be excellent. He dropped an eight. Where are you going to go with the football? So the folks here in the stands this afternoon, they're happy about that one. Their guys get the early advantage after the opening drive field goal. And they should be happy. Their guys look good getting down the field, and that's got to give them hope that good things are in store here today. Now the Falcons offense gets ready to head back onto the field. Now problems right out of the gate. The score is 10 and 7. And the Falcons oh, have spot me. Way back out onto the field. The kick was good, so 13 and 7. So spot me, isn't he? Is he defense now? Okay. So spot me is up. They'll throw on first down with Ryan. Dancing to his left. It'll be a two-yard gain, and it'll make it second down. Yeah, not much there that time, and I think we were both wondering once he got out of the box whether he just throw the ball away, and he winds up only picking up a yard or two. On second down, Ryan. And he's got his man in stride, complete. The other stream's not up. We don't want to mess them up, so. Well, the strategy was evident. Uh, yeah, Joel is here. And making a one on one play with a cornerback. Who's usually going to win that one? The tight end, but not there. Not in this situation. How about the corner defeating that logic and making a really nice tackle? Joel. Uh, yeah, Joel's playing the game right now. Throw on third down. And that is, I think he caught it. He did, but they'll say out of bounds. It'll be incomplete. A third down, he tried to stay in bounds, did all he Joel is very he short. It, was led a little bit too far. Yeah, and that's always difficult, isn't it? Because you know half of your body is trying to stay behind. I, Joel's in the losing bracket, so he's playing a bunch of randoms. The top half worked. It was the bottom half that was in question. Now it's Ryan. To the sideline, and he's got it. They say the feet are down. Yes, the line judge says they're in. That'll be a first down. I know that's their first connection in this game, but you and I both know that Julio Jones is without a doubt his quarterback's favorite target. Oh, yeah, man. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, and the reason that he's that is because of his dependability. And, and quarterbacks have to have that. No, the other stream is not up. We do not want to mess. We're not messing up their game. Because if we start the stream, then it cuts out on the video. Honestly, Prana. And he's going to pull his way forward to the 48. And they get six here after the incompletion, and it'll leave him with a third and four. So if they want to watch the game, they can watch it on YouTube. Alongside Charles Davis, Brandon Gordon, it's the Falcons in possession to begin quarter number two. They'll come up on a third and four here to start yeah. this out. This is misery. Joel's in the losing bracket. We got a winning bracket and a losing bracket. Not much, Turbo. We know it's not an easy job to go out and catch passes when people are trying to tackle you and knock the ball away. The long game. NFL teams last year a little under 50% on fourth down conversions. This is a bit tougher. Fourth and four. Bro.
Bro, everybody is playing the Falcons. Like, everybody. In motion left, Robinson. Now Ryan. That's all everybody is playing. Looking for Jones, and it's intercepted. A great read, and it's picked off. And the return stops just a little bit shy of midfield at the 48-yard line. So out come the Falcons now. And they split the uprights last time for three. They've got the lead. They're not going to play this conservative. They're, they're not hoping for another field goal. They're hoping for a touchdown. I'm with you on that one. I like where your head is. I like the way you're thinking because you're exactly right. Trying to sit on a lead and play that way, that doesn't work too well for most teams. Run your offense. Run what you do best. Exactly. Put it all the way down and try to increase your lead in a big way. The best way to do it, touchdowns. Second down following the run. <laughs> Sanu, the man in motion left. Coleman. And ah, dang. Here at about the 42. Give him eight yards there. Still a few inches to go, though, as it'll be third down at about the length of the football. That was a good run, and it got to the second level. And what I mean by that is that's where the linebackers usually play. First level being the defensive front, last level being the secondary. But the strong safety position ended up making the tackle, and oftentimes we call them a hybrid. Combination defensive back, combination linebacker. We saw the linebacker make the stop. Yes, you do. So a minute and ten seconds, and then we're switching over. Spot me is 26 to 7. So spot me's up. 27 to 7. We got 24 seconds left in the second quarter. Yeah, 
changes because now you can't run any offense at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack them here. Offense trying to avoid stalling out. Uh, I'll have to look at it. Uh, I don't even know your name. Because you got a white name, so I can't even read. All right, I got 15 seconds, and then hopefully we can get the stream up and running. Oh my God! And seeing no options, he just tosses this one away incomplete. Now that'll bring up second down. All right, different topic here. 2018, the Super Bowl traveling north, far north to Minneapolis. Early, Ten seconds. Early predictions for that one. Who you got? Well, you know, everyone's still waiting in the NFL for a home team to play in its home stadium, right? So could the Vikings be that team? I'll start in the NFC, and I'm going to say no. I think Seattle. Starting to get near that maybe last run with their defense. Burrow Thomas returns. I'd like to see Al coming out of the NFC. How about you? Well, I'm actually going to take a Dallas Cowboys. Spot me is up 10. I think that they came 20. Year, Not 10. I like that one. Well, in the AFC, I'm going to go with a team that if they have good defense and their quarterback oh. stays healthy, they could be that team. I feel a problem. Okay, I'm going dark horse. Cleveland Browns. Oh, let's go. From worst to first. Oh, he's such a good route runner. Shows it there on third down. Very proficient and a good pass. And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's going to have in you to go to you in important times because he can trust you being in the right spot. And they connected there and picked up a first down. Now he'll let it go deep down the left sideline. And they went big on first down. Proves unfruitful. I know exactly why I tried to throw the ball to Julio Jones there. He's never considered cover. He's either too fast or too strong. You always try and get it to him. Especially on those deep passes. Okay, you should be up here in about three seconds. Three seconds. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. And it looks like we've got a dime set here defensively. Six DBs in the game. In motion left, Robinson. To throw is Ryan. <clears throat> Alright guys, the other account is up so you can go watch them. I just made sure. That is the Spot Me game. So go to that channel, that is where Spot Me is playing. We finally got it up. Yeah, let me go and post them. And with halftime on the horizon, they'll be out of timeouts from here forward. Is that like slash post? I just play after play after play on this long drive for the offense. Out of the gun, it's Ryan. And yeah, there we go. From the gun on third down, Ryan surveying the field. It's caught, Jones. Now Jones is hit. He lost the football. And the defense not able to get it. From, from a defensive perspective, what's that moment like when you realize the ball is loose? 
it is a moment where all concentration goes right to the football. This is something you've talked about in all your preparation for the game. And you probably talked about this training camp. Knock the ball free, take it away from the other team, and now you have that chance. It's a little bit of deflation when they end up recovering it. They knocked it free, but couldn't take it away. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. Well, a well-executed blitz, no doubt. Great job by the linebacker. Maybe the quarterback, if he could have seen that, could have audibled there. Yeah, he needed to be in a different play because that one just meshed perfectly for the defense. All the gaps were filled, except for the one the offense really wanted to run through, and that was filled by a big man wanting to make a tackle. And he made a great tackle. Ryan hit, and he lost the football. And the taking it right down Broadway. And this is going to be brought back. It's a scoop and score for the Falcon TD. So hold the phone here, Charles. I've kind of written them off, but after that touchdown, certainly a long way still to go, but stranger things have happened. Well, when you're going that big second-half comebacks, plays like that have to be involved. And oh, my goodness, this is nowhere close. Well to the right and no good. And you can bet they're preaching two hands on the ball here as the kicks away following that fumble return. Here comes the Atlanta offense now, ready to take over here. After the interception, here's Ryan. And that's caught. Did he stay in bounds, though? He did not. Ruled incomplete. All right, different topic here. 2018, the Super Bowl traveling north, far north to Minneapolis. Early, early, early predictions for that one. Who you got? Well, you know, everyone's still waiting in the NFL for a home team to play in its yeah. home stadium, right? So could the Vikings be that team? I'll start in the NFC, and I'm going to say no. I think Seattle. Starting to get near that, maybe last run with their defense. Burrow Thomas returns. I like Seattle coming out of the NFC. How about you? Well, I'm actually going to take a Dallas Cowboys NFC title run. I think that they came so close this year, probably most talented going into next year. I like that one. Well, in the AFC, I'm going to go with a team that if they improve their defense and their quarterback stays healthy, they could be that team, the Oakland Raiders. Okay, I'm going dark horse. Cleveland Browns. Uh, let's go. Hey, from worst to first. first. It looked like they had something there, but I think that he was thinking about running with the football before he actually hauled it in, and that led to a big drop. The three straight incompletions, they don't care. That hasn't dissuaded them. They're going to go for it on fourth. Here we go on fourth down with Ryan. He's got Sanu. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. I don't know if I agree with that. I guess they don't care if I agree with that. But, boy, you have to be surprised by that, right? I definitely was surprised that they decided to go for it in this situation. But they must have either felt like they either had a great play call on or they're trying to show extreme confidence. And he'll get this down only to about the 46. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Well, so many times we look at a short run and we praise the offense for trying to set the tempo and establish things, but the defensive guys, hey, they just won the battle there. It wasn't a big run given up. They don't always have to absorb the body blows. Sometimes they dish them out themselves. And they'll send the tight end in motion here. Here's Ryan getting it out left side to Sanu. And a nice gain of 21 yards. And here comes play number six on this drive. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. They come up in an offset eye. Ryan on the handoff. It's Freeman. And not much. Maybe a yard down to the 23. Ricardo Allen, the safety, makes the stop. now in Atlanta. So the offense looking at a second and eight. A 
handoff. Devontae Freeman. And a short gain here down to the 22. Only a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a third down. And in this situation with a lead fourth quarter, they're liking keeping the ball on the ground, I'm sure. That's just smart football, but you know the defense has to know it as well. They've got to stop them here. So now we're going to see that loading the box in a big way. Six, seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take, puts a little bit more pressure on your big offensive line. On third down, Ryan. Under pressure, and he'll go down. Sacked back at the 31. You know, on these types of plays, we're always looking to assess blame. Okay, where did it break down? Sometimes it's just a great play. So on fourth down, off goes Matt Ryan, and on is another Matt, Matt Bryant. This to make it a three-score game late. And Bryant's kick is good. And that'll push the lead up to 17. And you figure with that, this game's pretty well out of reach. It would take a heck of a comeback at this point, being three scores down. I think that's too much to ask with time winding down here in the fourth. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he'll get across the 20 before he's brought down at about the 23-yard line. Atlanta now coming out on the field. And following the interception, we'll see what they can put together on this drive. I can hear my old college coach right now. He always used to tell us before every game, the team making the fewest mistakes will win. What they're hoping is that that last mistake... And he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. A loss of four that time on the sack, and it brings up second. Well, Brandon, sometimes I think when we watch games, we're actually watching a living museum because we're seeing the evolution of positions almost with each passing game. How about defensive ends nowadays and the way that they can run almost all the way across the field? It is unbelievable, isn't it? I mean, they're, they're so strong, but they're so lean, they can move so quick with those bodies. It's almost unfair. You're supposed to be able to know where a defensive end is supposed to be on every play. These guys flash so quickly, you're not sure where they're going to end up. Well, here we go now. An extra defensive back in there on third and ten. Gabriel, the man in motion. Ryan. And this is Gabriel on the catch. And he gets it to the 34. Good enough for the first. It's a gain of 11 yards that time, and it produces a new set of downs. And quickly, they get to the line. Now a play fake here on first down. And this is caught. I think he got that with one hand. He goes for 18 there as the drive will continue. They'll throw on first down with Ryan. And his throw is going to be incomplete. So the incomplete pass brings up second down. Again on second and ten, it's Ryan. Flushed out right, and finding the tight end, Hooper. And he'll go down shy of the 40 at the 41. Seven yards on the play, and that's going to bring up a third down. down at about the 38. Three yards there, good enough to keep the drive moving. And the offense moving quickly to the line. On first down, Ryan. And complete on the right side, it's Tammy. A nice pick up there, 10 yards, and it'll move the sticks. Obviously, this has not been a banner game throwing the football. So what you got to do, you got to kind of down focus, don't you think? Find the tight end, take some easier completions. Yeah, interception last drive. There he hits the reliable target. They go play action here on first down. Tammy's got it. Complete. And he'll take it into the end zone. Touchdown, Atlanta. Jacob Tammy, 27 yards. And the Falcons cut into that lead.
And that touchdown puts us in a position to have a discussion, doesn't it? Now it'll be a two-score game after the conversion. Yeah, I mean, there's no doubt with a two-score game they're going to have to onside kick it. We'll just see if they've got a miracle up their sleeve. And you wonder what onside kicks they're going to use and in what sequence if they hope to have a chance to win this game. And a good job here by the Falcons. Their hands team able to recover it. Well, fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And... I know we brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of an anecdotal type of a number. Kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% of the time you win the game. I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. Defense really showing respect to the deep ball here, playing off the receivers. Now a handoff. It's Freeman, and he'll get inside. You know, the Falcons going to use another timeout. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. If they want a first, they need to get the football to the 32 here on third down. They come out here in the eye. And they'll run it here. And he's going to get to the 31, enough for the first down. Freeman again. That one good for 16, and the drive will continue. Absolutely love the run right there. This guy's known for his quickness, but also for his speed. And he's able to get to the second level almost before you blink if you give him any type of blocking. Always talk about slot receivers. And they're usually known as quicker than fast. In this case, we right. got a guy who's quick and <clears throat> fast, and he used it to great advantage. Jag City, you don't know what you're talking about. Press coverage here. What is this in? First and mm, there we go, the five. And he gets in. Touchdown, Atlanta. Tevin Coleman. Taking it in. And the Falcons use the short field to their advantage as they cash in for six. I know we don't talk about it enough, but the intelligence level of the guys up front blocking, the offensive linemen, maybe the smartest guys in football overall. Add in a little bit of athleticism and a whole lot of toughness. You've got a so lot you to deal with, don't kill you? That That's one. why the guys in the they're backfield done. get them really nice Christmas gifts, right? If they're smart, they do. Atlanta yeah, I wanted to, Jag. And the turnover last time, that's sort of been symptomatic of their struggles here in this one. Good work. Yeah, I like it, though, because you're exactly you right. Like that, don't you? All game long, they've struggled moving the ball, turning it over on the last possession. Is that word again, symptomatic? Yeah. yeah, I like that. Your analysis, symptomatic of the success of this broadcast. What I like is that you gave me the Still me, Journey. <laughs> and now they're in the hurry-up. Now a play fake here on first down. It's caught left side and Tammy. A gain of six there on first. So much goes into a successful play, doesn't it? How about that play action there? Freezing the deep. <coughs> just there you go, Sporty Lake. For the completion. You got it. What's up, Jack? Give me, give me, a, give me a shirt. Who has the ball? Uh, well, the red team has the ball. Yeah, I know. We wanted to watch Spot. And now it looks like they're going to be in the hurry up. My eyes like they're just burnt. Okay, you can hit. And he's just going to throw this one out of bounds here. Nowhere to go with it incomplete. I hope I don't sound too rah rah on that one, but. That's the exact right throw. That's what I wanted, Jag. No one gets it. Give him a lot of credit for being really precise with it. Got rid of it. No one got it. Again on second and ten. All right, young Cecil. That's a good one. And he'll go out of bounds after you got it, Bo. Further down inside the forty. Call it a gain of five. Why can't we all just be, you know, positive? Okay, he's not going to get the first down, but this is still a nice job of buying some time and then running to get to the sideline and get out of bounds and avoid the big hit. Get up. They'll run it now out of the gun. 
just a yard on the run there, and that's going to bring us to a fourth down. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter. Let's see how this plays out. Here we go. It's Ryan. But I'm killing the capture. We're trying to get it set up over here. And they hit him as he throws. As this one's going to go straight down to the turf. Incomplete. Now the Falcons offense, they get ready to head back out here. And they will simply, Charles, be looking to duplicate what they did last drive when they were able to push it in for six. All right. If you guys want to watch Skimbo play, he is going to be over on the other stream. So I'll put it in chat again. He's going to be over in this stream. So Skimbo is going to be over there. And he'll get this up past the 45 to the 47. It should be coming up soon. In situation with a lead fourth quarter, they're liking keeping the ball on the ground, I'm sure. That's just smart football, but you know the defense has to know it as well. You got it, young Cecil. So now we're going to see that loading the box in a big way. Six, seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take. It's a little bit more Pepper spray, don't even talk to me. Who is, uh, I don't know, uh, Chippy. This is the NC attorney. Yes, it is. Second and inches is oftentimes you go an ahead. invitation for an Please. offense coordinator to take a big shot downfield because he feels like he can come back on third down and pick up the first down. But sometimes you just don't want to break tendencies. I know, Crito Ben. Stay with who you know and go get the first down. That's exactly uh, what on the do. second uh, bracket, that is the winner's bracket. Are you gonna go find someone? I'm waiting to see someone. I'm Who? And then I'm in here with him. They want me. In motion left Robinson. Yes, they do. Doesn't matter. For midfield now. Here's Ryan. I'm the number one commentator. I'll try real hard to comment commentate on this game. All right. Yeah, you do, young. You guys want you guys want me. Thank you, drag. I like Skimbo. Our crowd is trashy compared to other games. Honestly. Who won? 